Do you want to extract more data in a shorter time? Today you'll learn how to do so with the help of concurrency and parallelism. Before we begin, let me ask you a question. Take a look at the schemes on the screen and try to guess which is concurrency and which is parallelism. Let me know in the comments if you got it right. If not, no worries, because in this video you'll learn the difference between these two, what to use when, and some practical examples. Let's begin. To better understand concurrency, let's think of multitasking. A central processing unit, CPU or simply a processor, can work on only one task at a time. If you give it multiple tasks, such as playing a song and writing code, it simply switches between them. This capability of modern CPUs to pause and resume tasks so fast gives an illusion that the tasks are running in parallel. However, this is not parallel, this is concurrent. To understand how concurrency works, let's solve a practical problem. The task is to process over 200 pages as fast as possible. Here are the details of our job. First, go to the Wikipedia page with the list of countries by population and get the links of all the 233 countries listed on this page. Then, go to all these 233 pages and save the HTML locally. Let's create a function to get all the links. At first, we won't involve concurrency or parallelism here. This function gets the response from the Wikipedia page and uses beautiful soup to extract all the links from it. Links that we retrieve are relative. They are converted to absolute links using URL join. Now, let's write a function that doesn't use any threading, but sequentially downloads the HTML from all those 233 links. First, let's create a function to fetch and save a link. This function is simply getting the response of the parameter link and saving it as an HTML file. Finally, let's call this function in a loop. With our computer, this took 81.23 seconds. Our goal is to speed it up using concurrency. By the way, if you'd like to learn more ways to improve scraping speeds and scale up, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Let's use the Thread Pool Executor class. This class is part of the Concurrent Futures module. The benefit of using this class is that it allows us an easy interface for creating and executing threads. Let's see how it can be used. First, we need to import Thread Pool Executor. Now, the for loop written above can be changed to the following. Here, the executor applies the function fetch to every item of links and yields the results. The maximum number of threads is controlled by max workers argument. The final result is astonishing. All these 233 links were downloaded in 6.33 seconds. This result is almost 13 times better than the synchronous version, which took around 81 seconds. It's important to find the sweet spot for the max worker. On our computer, if the max worker parameter is changed to 32, the time comes down to 3.78 seconds. Increasing this number further doesn't improve things much. This sweet spot will differ for every processor for the same code. In the previous section, we looked at a single processor. However, most processors have more than one core. In some cases, a machine can have more than one processor. One example is parallel computing. This is a type of computation in which multiple processors carry out many processes at the same time. In parallel programming, the code is written to utilize multiple CPU cores. In this case, more than one processor is actually executed in parallel. Let's go back to our case of downloading the HTML from all those 233 links. In Python, parallelism can be achieved by using multiprocessing. It allows us to download several links at the same time by using several processors. To write an effective code that can be run on any machine, you would need to know the number of processors available on that machine. Python provides a very useful method, CPU count, to get the count of the CPU cores in a machine. This is very helpful in finding the exact number of tasks that can be processed in parallel. Note that in multi-core CPUs, each core works independently. Let's start with importing the required module. 
Now we can replace the for loop in the synchronous code with this code. This will create a multiprocessing pool that is equal to the count of the CPU. It means that the limit of multiple tasks being carried out would be determined when the code is actually running. This fetches all 233 links in 8.75 seconds. It's 9.3 times faster than the synchronous version, which took around 81 seconds. However, it's 2.3 times slower than the concurrency method. As you can see, concurrency and parallelism work according to different principles, but both are great ways to make web scraping faster. Let's quickly summarize the differences. First of all, concurrency is when multiple tasks can run in overlapping time periods. It's an illusion of multiple tasks running in parallel because of a very fast switching by the CPU. Two tasks can't run at the same time on a single core CPU. Parallelism is when tasks actually run in parallel on multiple CPUs. Second, concurrency is about managing multiple instruction sequences at the same time, while parallelism is running multiple instruction sequences at the same time. In Python, concurrency is achieved by using threading, while parallelism is achieved by using multiprocessing. And lastly, concurrency needs only one CPU core, while parallelism needs more than one. Now that you've learned about these two processes, you might still wonder when to use what. Use concurrency when you need to handle tasks in no specific order. Use parallelism when you have to execute tasks simultaneously. However, remember that each project is unique, so the approach can also differ. In general, if you haven't tried concurrency and parallelism yet, try starting with concurrency first. Do you prefer to use concurrency or parallelism for your scraping projects? I'd be curious to hear your opinions, so please share in the comments below. If you have questions, contact us at hello at oxylabs.io or simply leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.